any VRF. A little bit diking. Mr. Bishi. Fujutsu, any VRF system. And even mini, mini splits, dockless minis, any VRFs, when they're low on refrigerant, you more than likely will not get an error code. Error code. No error codes when it's low on refrigerant. What you'll get, what you'll receive is a poor performance. So the indoor units won't blow as cold. This particular service call here, um, this unit wasn't um, functioning properly. There was no error codes on the indoor or, or on the outdoor, no error codes. The pressures looks normal, as you can see. And the only telltale sign is the amperage. So when I started off, this was only drawing 12 amps, which is one half. Just about one half. And so because of the experience that I know about these units, or that I have about these units, you can even hear the compressors as we speak, ramping up. So the compressor is turning very slow, the fans is turning very slow, and so the head pressure is up and the, the back pressure is up. You think it's all right, but it's not because the compressor is only doing just about half of the work. So you use your amperage meter, your amp probe, and that will tell you. And coupled with your uh, suction line temperatures as well, this number was at uh, 65 or 64 when I started. So you see now, so just a few squeeze of gas, the amperage goes up close to my well, not close, but it goes up, and I can hear my compressor ramps up. So I don't know exactly how much pounds to add, but I know that just adding some refrigerant, R14 as you can see, just adding some refrigerant, my amperage is going up. Amperage draw is going up, and my compressor, I can hear it ramping up, it's speeding up. So I know that with my suction line temperature in the 50s, um, certainly my supply here will be colder. If it was in the 60s, supply here is not as cold. It's poor performance. But again, no error codes. This is a quick tip I want to share with you guys. Um, again, this is by no means the proper way to charge these units. What you want to do is uh, do your calculation and um, coupled with the factory charge, you start with that and the amount of indoor units. Um, but this is just a quick uh, tip or a quick fix. If you ever run into the situation, no error codes, just poor cooling. The unit is out, the unit outside is running, and you're figuring just speeds up, speeds up a little bit more the compressor. As I'm talking to you, suction line temperature is dropping. So yeah, um, yeah, it was drawing 12 amps when I got here. So that's all I know. I knew and then with experience so yeah um, you show up on a call poor cooling and the compressor is getting louder and louder and louder another way you could tell is if the compressor is, is running and you can barely hear it you know it's not moving it's not rotating at high RPMs because these units can do that they will run stay in line maintain system operation but it will be poor performance and you would got no you would have got no error codes um, yeah this have rattled a lot of technicians. So I just figured I'd do a, a quick little video on this one here, guys. Um, yeah, I can hear the compressor screaming and ramping up even as we speak. Seems like my amperage is leveling out at 14, 11 though. Um, it ain't going any higher. Uh, don't seem like it's going any higher. But um, 55 degrees. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more, see if I can get a 15 amps, and then I'm gonna just leave it at that. I'm okay with 55 degree suction line. What's going on with these gauges here? All right. And again, this is by no means the proper way to charge these units. Did you hear that? I know it's just it's not, it's not just me. I'm pretty good up. It's getting louder. It's doing more work. Yes. Just from down just now. 
just rammed down a little bit it's Hampridge Falls um, yeah I think I'm gonna leave it like this now um, it's gonna go inside and check my supply here let's go for a walk guys One is 53 degrees. Let's see this one here. 